Tonight, it is all about the law. We start with a Prococo corruption trial where the jury found the former top Cuomo aide guilty on three counts. A big surprise in Lower Manhattan. We are live at the courthouse. Then we have analysis with our panel of attorneys. Then the Stormy Daniels case. Could a porn star be the president's biggest legal problem as we speak? We're going to take a look at this controversial case. Also, the farmer bro will spend the next seven years in a federal prison. Martin Kelly, he insulted the court, among others. He was obnoxious to Congress. He called the Justice Department a sewer. We're going to ask our attorneys whether or not this guy was his own worst enemy and as a consequence, got a stiffer sentence. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thank you very much for joining us on this busy Tuesday. We begin at the federal courthouse in Lower Manhattan. That's where a jury found Joe Prococo guilty on three felony counts of corruption. Dominic Carter, he's been live there all day long. He's been there from the beginning of the trial, and he joins us outside the courthouse. Dom, what do you got? Well, Richard, after almost eight weeks, almost eight long weeks, the jury has had its say. You're open to us. Yes, I am. We and disappointed, but as Barry says, that. we're going to consider our options and move forward. He spent more than two decades as a top confidant and right-hand man to Governor Cuomo. But now Joe Pococo finds himself convicted of three felony counts of conspiracy and bribery. He was also cleared of three other counts. Not only is this conviction bad news for Pococo, but many believe it doesn't bode well for Governor Cuomo, who's up for re-election this year and who may have an eye on the White House. In a statement, the governor said he respects the jury's decision. Quote, while I am sad for Joe Pococo's young daughters who will have to deal with this pain, I echo the message of the verdict. There is no tolerance for any violation of the public trust. Are you a victim of politics, Mr. Pococo? Well, we're not going to comment on things like that. Look, it was a difficult time and place to be trying a case involving Albany politics. There's no question about that. Um, we think that it was a much closer case than uh, some were led to believe. Federal prosecutors had accused Pococo of accepting more than $300,000 in bribes from three executives from companies with state business. Much of the government's narrative centered around Todd Howe, the prosecution's star witness and a longtime Albany insider, who prosecutors said engineered the bribes. Howe was arrested midway through his testimony after admitting during cross-examination that he had attempted to defraud his credit card company. In addition to the verdict against Prococo, the jury convicted core president Stephen Aiello of one conspiracy count but acquitted him of paying bribes and lying to the feds. Aiello faces up to 20 years in prison Prosecutors allege that Aiello funneled thousands of dollars to Pococo through a shell company. Counselor, your reaction? Well, we're disappointed, obviously. Uh, they, it's an inconsistent verdict. Pococo is looking at the potential of 50 years behind bars when he is sentenced June 11th. The other core executive, Joe Girardi, was acquitted on all counts. The jury was deadlocked on the power company executive, Peter Galbraith Kelly, the U.S. Attorney for New York Southern District, Jeffrey Berman, in a statement said Prococo's guilty verdict shows he sold the, quote, sacred obligation to honesty and faithfully serve the citizens of New York. Richard, there will be political ramifications from this conviction today. Now, keep in mind, you and I have been down here and reported uh, live from the courthouse uh, in the fallout after the Sheldon Silver trial, the former speaker. Something to keep in mind. It was not pretty when Judge Caproni sentenced Sheldon Silver. She's going to be doing exactly the same thing to Pococo come June 11th. Reporting live from Lower Manhattan, I'm Dominic Carter. Richard, let's go back to you in the studio. Well, well Dom, I'm curious. We both felt um, the longer the jury was held out and the unique circumstances among the limited hours they could deliberate, some of them all but uh, threatening to revolt if they had to keep deliberating, that it was when, not if, this thing was going to get tossed. 
at the end of the day, it seems they made up their mind about Prococo did the jury. It was the other three defendants that was uh, the reason for some of the deadlock, right? Richard, you are dead on a thousand percent. That is exactly the way that this played out. Conventional wisdom said that considering that Joe Prococo, if you will, was the big fish in this trial, that the jury had to be deadlocked on Joe Prococo. He was looking at six counts, six felony counts. Conventional wisdom said it, he had to be the one, the polarizing figure that this jury was deadlocked on. As you just laid out, that was not the case. They had long decided Prococo. It was one of the other defendants that held this jury up, not Joe Prococo. And now, as I said earlier, he is looking, Richard, at some 50 years. Probably won't receive that, but some 50 years in prison. And, Richard, I'm glad you brought that up because I want you to listen because we had the opportunity to talk to uh, Barry Bora, his attorney, as well as Steve Coffey. Uh, they're already uh, underway in terms of their appeals. Take a look at what they had to say to us. We are uh, reviewing the, the uh, jury's verdict, uh, trying to figure out what logic or consistency there is in the verdict. We are uh, reviewing other options and... Um, what we might do in terms of making motions and pursuing our appellate rights. They've got an inconsistent verdict, so we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to move to court to set aside the verdict. I think the jury was confused. And then if we are unsuccessful there, we're going to go to the Second Circuit. But definitely. on its face, the verdict is, is confusing and it's inconsistent. Definitely an appeal. Oh, definitely an appeal. And I, I think we have a real shot at setting aside this verdict. So, Richard, the appeals process starts, as we've just been talking about. But while that's going on, and at least we have history to point to, I know you remember, you stood right here where I'm standing right now, and you broadcast from here during Silver and did your show. Judge Caproni had already given Silver a, a date to report to prison in July, just months after she sentenced him. Joe Prococo, who worked with Cuomo at HUD, the governor's office, campaign manager twice. He is now looking at the same fate, prison time, from the same judge, Richard. And you can argue, and I'll get into the panel about the chances of appeal and the grounds for it, but it was a bad charge um, because of the McDonald verdict that got that sentence set aside, and the retrial is going to start in less than a month. But, Dominic, I got to tell you, um, every night you would talk, obviously, to the Prococo legal team where they'd come out, and you could tell, at least with the naked eye, that Bohr and Prococo, they looked real confident um, up until today. Um, and the, the change in demeanor, really from the time that Todd Howe testified disastrously, and then to the end of the trial, and this thing keep getting held up, I got to imagine they were shocked when the verdict was read. Understatement of the year, Richard. I have talked each and every day. As you know, we don't reveal off the record conversations. I spoke with Mr. Pococo for a good 45 minutes at 8 a.m. this morning. At 8 a.m. this morning, we spoke in the cafeteria, uh, he and I, for about 45 minutes. When you add what you just said, it, Richard, the Todd, a man who's in prison right behind this building tonight as we speak. Todd Howe, the star prosecution witness. And let's also keep in mind that the Buffalo Billions trial is also coming up in June. So that's part two of this trial in which Todd Howe is the star witness at that one. When you consider the disaster on the witness stand that Todd Howe was, the fact that the feds had to distance themselves from their own witness and have him arrested, yes, Prococo, Bora, they thought that if it's a deadlock jury, there's a there's a chance that, it would, that that the U.S. attorney would not bring this case back because it's a different U.S. attorney. It's not pre Ferrara, but all of that is out the window because on these six counts, they had already convicted Prococo on three of them, and now he's looking at the possibility. It's a stretch, but the possibility of some 50 years in prison. Richard. Dominic, great job, my friend. Thank you so much. When we come back, uh, we're going to bring our legal panel here. I got a whole lot of questions about.
how we got to the verdict here today. You heard from some of the attorneys involved in this case. They think there's ground for appeal. Where this all goes from here, here, especially in an era where it has become the norm here um, to basically see these trials uh, end in either a mistrial or an out and out dismissal. Um, why this time? Why the conviction? We'll get into that straight ahead.